Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth episode of this Web API design series where I cover everything you need to know to be a top backend Web API engineer. Now in this episode, I'm going to cover API pagination. Now most of you guys might already have heard of this or even know how this works. In this video, I'm going to cover two of the most common pagination standards used in the industry. For those of you who are completely new to pagination, I'm going to cover it first, then I'll dive into offset-based and cursor-based pagination. So if you want to skip right ahead, you can use the timestamps to do that. So let's begin with why we need pagination in the first place. If your API serves a large amount of data, let's say hundreds of thousands of records, you need to allow clients to consume this data in a methodical manner for the sake of scalability, both for the client consuming the data and the backend API serving it. Let's take an example. Let's say you are building an API that deals with products for an e-commerce application and you've got an inventory of more than 20,000 products. This is still a relatively low number as APIs usually deal with much larger data sets, but let's stick to this one for now. So a call from the client to retrieve products would return a response containing 20,000 items. That is a huge response payload. This is a performance hit for your backend API because your backend is probably pulling this out from a database and loading it into memory. It needs to do this for all the GET requests coming through, so this approach can soon get out of hand. Not only is this bad for the backend, the client consuming this data will also have to deal with this huge response. This can lead to much longer load times, higher memory consumption in the front-end application, and so on. Now, I'm sure you've all noticed that most e-commerce websites display products in pages. A customer might click on the next page to see more, but if they don't want to, well, then the website never needed to load that data in the first place, right? So there really is no need to get all the data in a single request. So an efficient way to solve this problem is by requesting data in batches, also known as pages. Well, we do this through API pagination, and this is what API pagination is all about. It's essentially a way for your API to serve data for a specific resource in batches. So there are two common industry standards like I just talked about before, which is offset-based pagination and cursor-based pagination. It's important to understand which one works best for your use case as they both have pros and cons. So let's talk about these in more detail up next. All right, so what exactly is offset-based pagination? Well, clients provide a page size that defines the maximum number of items to return and a page number that indicates the starting position in the list of items. The terms most commonly used to define these are limit and offset, with limit being the maximum number of items and offset being the starting position. A request like this with a limit of 50 and an offset of 100 can easily be pulled out from a SQL database using a query like this. Let's look deeper into what's actually going on here. A client queries products with a limit of 50 and an offset of 100. The API server would then take these values and skip the first 100 items and return the next 50. So if your database had 200 product items, then it will return items from 101 to 150. And this is all there is to offset based pagination. It's pretty simple, right? So let's talk about some of the benefits now. For one, it's extremely simple to implement for both the client and the server. Users can easily jump into arbitrary pages instead of being forced to scroll through each page. For example, if they wanted to skip to the sixth page from the first page, well, they can just directly jump to the sixth page without having to scroll through two, three, four, and five. And what about the drawbacks? Well, one issue is that this approach can be unreliable at times. 
if there are frequent changes to your data as the pagination is working, then you might run into missing items or duplicate items. Another reason is that offset-based pagination works for small datasets. But if you're dealing with a large dataset, things can get pretty inefficient. This is because your database queries will most likely have to count and skip rows up to the offset before returning the actual results. The larger your offset, the more inefficient your query becomes. Let's say you have 5,000 items in your products table. The client first requests with a limit of 1,000 and an offset of 1,000. So your database reads through the first 1,000, begins to collect the next 1,000, and returns the results. For the next page, the offset is 2,000. Your database again reads through the first 1,000 and the 2,000 items, and then returns the next 1,000. The next page will read through the first 3,000. This means that the first 1,000 records were read three times. The first 2,000 records were read twice. You can see how this will not scale as the offset gets bigger and bigger. It's highly inefficient. This can get even more trickier in a distributed system. Your database scan might include a number of shards before the desired results are received. So the bottom line here is that offset-based pagination is not ideal for large datasets. If only there was a way to keep track of the last record, then we can avoid having to reread everything from scratch, right? Well, that's where cursor-based pagination comes in. Cursor-based pagination is a technique that addresses the problems of offset-based pagination. The client first sends a request to get the list of items by specifying a limit, nothing else. The server then responds by returning the requested number of items. In addition to this, the server also includes the next cursor. In some cases, these are known as continuation tokens. The client then sends this next cursor along with any subsequent requests. The server will use these next cursors to implement efficient queries so as to avoid reading through the same records over and over again like in offset-based pagination. It's basically a pointer that the server can use to improve performance. The value you use for the cursor is totally up to you as the API developer. Sometimes databases provide these out of the box so you don't really have to think about it. But in some cases, you can come up with your own cursor value as well. Let's say you've decided to go with a timestamp. Maybe you created time as your cursor, which is not a bad choice at all by the way. The sample query would look something like this. Indexing this column would always be a good idea to improve query performance. So in action, let's say the initial request comes in with a limit of 1000 and no value for the cursor, you know, because it's the first request. The first 1000 items are returned. The next request comes with the cursor pointed at 1000 so we return 1001 to 2000 items. The next request comes with the cursor pointed at 2000. So we know where to start off from, we return the next 1000 items. As you can see, we don't have to reread the same set of records because we have a cursor. Performance is one of the main benefits of cursor-based pagination. With indexes on the cursor, you can drastically improve performance. Another benefit is that you get consistent results. The addition or removal of items during request does not bring in consistent results as with offset-based pagination. So what are the drawbacks then? Well, one of the main drawbacks is that the clients can't jump to a given page. They need to traverse through each page one by one. And records can't be added to the database at random positions. But then again, this is hardly the case in most scenarios, but it's worth keeping in mind. Clients need to store this next cursor value and send it along with each request. So it's one extra thing that the client needs to do when you compare it to offset-based pagination. 
Alright, so let's wrap this up and do a quick comparison to see when you should be using offset based and when you should be using cursor based. Well, offset based pagination is best used for applications that don't deal with large datasets, or ideally, the depth of the offset is controlled. Also, the clients would have to tolerate duplicates or missed items. If that's acceptable for your application, then you can use offset-based pagination. When it comes to cursor-based pagination, you are directly looking at high traffic applications where clients need to traverse through large datasets, and the consistency of the results are critical. So if that's your use case, then you should definitely go for cursor-based pagination. Well, that's it for this video guys. And if you enjoyed this video, put a comment down below and don't forget to like this video. And if you like more content like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel.